Can the dragon survive this game of death? Here's your look at the brand new Super 7 Bruce Lee Ultimates, The Challenger. Despite his tragically short time in the spotlight, Bruce Lee was able to cast a huge shadow that spanned the globe, encompassing not just martial arts, but Hollywood, pop culture, and the imagination of millions of fans. This 7-inch scale, highly articulate Ultimates figure of the Bruce Lee Challenger features Bruce Lee in his iconic yellow jumpsuit and comes with interchangeable alternate heads and hands and a variety of other accessories, including nunchucks and the green bamboo whip. We're not playing games, so you'll need to fight your way through multiple levels of martial arts experts, but if you want to miss out on the made-to-order Ultimates Bruce Lee figure, the Pain of regret may end up being just as bad. Hmm, I wonder if this game will end up leading him to kill Bill. Before we get a closer look at the challenger Bruce Lee, let's grab first the tape measure and see how tall the figure stands. I'll also bring in the earlier look at Warrior Bruce Lee so you can see the differences between the two. In the meantime, though, yellow jumpsuit wearing Bruce Lee stands about six and a quarter inches in height, or the figure's going to be about 15 and a half centimeters tall. One thing I'll say right away is that this, I think, is a better likeness of Bruce Lee than the earlier looked at Warrior. Just to show you, though, I'm going to slide over the one that we're about to have a look at and bring in the earlier looked at Warrior Bruce Lee. I don't know what it is. It might just be the sculpting of the hair, but I feel like this one, though, bears a better likeness of Bruce Lee and less like maybe Arnold Schwarzenegger, something I did mention in the review of the Warrior. There's a fair bit of territory to cover in the figure's accessory department, not to mention two decapitated heads rolling off to the side. Well... Talk about more of that in a moment. First, one accessory I did want to mention to you guys, one that you will want to be very careful of, is that the figure comes in clue with a tiny little bracelet. I didn't notice this right away when I was first removing the figure's hands, then going back and looking at images from Game of Death, I realized that Bruce Lee in some of those shots had himself a little bracelet. I think the bracelet actually sits on this side of the figure's body. So while you are, though, changing out the hands, make sure one thing that you don't leave behind is the bracelet. We're going to, in fact, actually just put this on his arm right now. I think when it comes to things like this, they should just be permanently molded either onto the figure's body or they should, if anything, if anything, just use glue and just glue them permanently in place. Or what you can also do as well as what I've just now done is moved it far enough up the forearm. So at least if I am going to be changing out the arms, the hands, which I am will be changing out those hands, I don't have to worry as much that I'm going to be losing that elastic. That l At least it's an elastic. But again, like you just want to be careful, though, that you don't accidentally leave it behind. Or even again, like just popping off the hands. Anyways, speaking of the hands, though, speaking of hands, right now, actually, Bruce Lee does have two closed fists in the sockets of his forearms. We will, though, be fixing that shortly, as the figure comes also included with a couple of gripping hands. Some of these hands seem to have made appearances over from the original Warrior Bruce Lee that we looked at before. So a couple of these gripping hands, I think, were the same ones that we did get from the Warrior one before. And then he also comes again with another gripping hand, just of a different grip. So good for, of course, holding the nunchuck or, again, that bamboo rod that he also has as well. He has a couple of also gestured hands, which I guess also serve the same purpose of a gripping hand, which I think is this is also the same hand that we also got before from the Warrior. Uh, also, the common clue with the figure, you get a couple of uh, more karate chopping hands, more specific like these hands where you can see like the thumb is curved in. But he also does have a slight variation to that where it looks as almost as if like the thumb, yeah, the thumb, as you can see in this one, is pretty close, but this one actually has a thumb that's detachable. So like in many of the posters that we see of Bruce Lee from the game of death, he seems to almost be holding the nunchuck resting sort of against his thumb. And that's something you can replicate, I feel, with this hand right here. Uh, the figure also comes included with, a, again, a couple of relaxed hands. We'll grab those right now. So a couple of dynamic hands. And some of my personal favorites carried over from the other one as well is we get a couple of these little gestured hands. Now, any one of those hands from earlier looked at Warrior, like, for example, this one here, for example, you simply just can reuse them because they are seeming to be using the exact same seg sized pegs. So if you want to just mix and match. Speaking, though, of mixing and matching, there will be, though, some mixing and matching between this one and the Warrior that we looked at before. Before, though, doing that, the figure comes included with this bamboo rod. 
The bamboo whip, in this case, oop, almost dropped it, is made of a fairly soft plastic, uh, to the point where almost when I was taking it out of the tray, I thought for a second I had snapped it. But it has just enough of a give, just enough of a give that it's not going to be breaking right away on you. Of course, you don't want to be doing that. That would just be ridiculous. But at least it has a little bit of wiggle space to it before it actually snaps. The figure also then includes a couple of nunchuck. The nunchucks, as you can see, this one is, uh, well, actually, these ones here are permanently molded. One is permanently molded in a U shape. The other one is a little more extended out. They're yellow to match, of course, his jumpsuit and some additional black panel lining that they've added to the end of it as well. These are good if you want just stacks and nunchuck where you don't actually want to have, I mean, if you want to have them pose without having to worry of the dangle, like, for example, the threading that they have on these ones too. Now, he has two of these. One right now, at least, is the one that we're looking at that does have a slightly more lighter color of yellow for the threading connecting the two. But he does also have this one, and this one has already taken the liberty of holstering itself inside this little pocket. I don't think there is a space that I can see on the figure. Obviously, there isn't. He's just got a jumpsuit on where you can actually store this. But I guess there is just a little bit of a storage space that you can store the secondary nunchuck that also has the same sort of threading as the one that we just looked at. Moving those all to the side, the figure also comes included with uh, two alternate head sculpts. Now, this is one important thing that I want to feel is crucial to mention about this particular review. When we did have a look, I'm just going to bring him in right now, the original warrior uh, Bruce Lee that was part of this same wave. One of the criticisms I did have about this figure was the fact I felt it bared a more resemblance to Arnold Schwarzenegger and maybe less a resemblance to Bruce Lee. Well, though, now looking at this figure and then picking up the one that we get from Game of Death, I don't know what it is that they have done differently, but I feel like this, the likeness is so much better here on the Game of Death release than what we got with the original Warrior uh, Bruce Lee. Now, the thing about it, though, is one other thing, too, is the fact that the figure has then swappable head sculpts. So just again, to pick up the figure here for a second, this is the defaulted head. And while maybe, yes, it bears still a little bit of a resemblance to Arnie, I think it looks much more like Bruce Lee than the one that we looked at first. It might have actually benefited me by actually looking at this second, because I think I would have actually had the bar a little higher after looking at this figure, that then to look at the warrior, I feel like the warrior just isn't as good of a delivery of Bruce Lee's likeness. That's just my own personal opinion. But I think like the head sculpt on this one is really quite good. It still, I think, is missing a mark when it comes to the way that the dragon actually did look. But I think it looks a lot more like him than the originally earlier looked at warrior. Now, he does come with two alternate head sculpts. Let's go pick those up right now. We're going to give them a purpose. There's this one that's sort of, again, like that traditional Bruce Lee that's making the expression on his face. And then there's a yelling Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee. Neither of these right now, at least, have bodies. We will be fixing that, though, in a moment. Uh, I like this one. I don't know if I necessarily will be displaying it with the figure, but I, I like the idea that there's a screaming Bruce Lee head sculpt. But the one that I want to draw more to the attention of is this one right here. I'm going to bring in back, keep bringing this guy back, the warrior one. Uh, while the hair is a little bit shorter, obviously, on this release, if, though, you were curious, you can pop the heads off the ball pegs. And you can replace them, in fact, with the one that came included with the Game of Death. I think it does fix the figure better. It's still missing a little bit of what I feel to be looking like Bruce Lee. But I think, though, if you compare it, you probably will agree with me that this one looks at least a little more like Bruce Lee than this one did here. For me, though, at least, while I like the other heads that they included, I might feel myself more inclined to stick with this defaulted head, because I think, honestly, it's the best of the three. So yeah, not only is the hands the things that can be changed between the figures, but you can, in fact, swap the heads out and share them between those two figures also as well. I would also imagine, too, this is the first wave of Bruce Lee Ultimate figures that we are getting from Super 7. We are getting also a second wave, at least advertised right now online. I would imagine, I can't see them why they would be changing out ball joints on any of these, uh, you know, for the figures. I would imagine that any one of these heads could be then, in theory, swapped out with any one of the figures from Wave 1 and Wave 2. We'll only know for that for sure when we look at the Wave 2 figures. So let's move that to the side. Getting, though, a closer look at Bruce Lee. Now, again, like, this is him more in his classic suits, wore, worn, of course, in the class, in that famous film, A Game of Death. The, the real interesting reason by, in fact, why he was wearing the yellow jumpsuit is that apparently producer Andre Morgan said that because if the suit had been black, the big kick that he actually gets from Jabber would not have been visible if it had been on a black jumpsuit. So they decided, though, as more of a, a wardrobe decision, just to actually make the suit yellow. And again, like history was made the moment that they made the jumpsuit yellow. I always liked the idea that Bruce Lee was wearing the yellow jumpsuit 
and I think it looks quite good, actually. I mean, he's got the panel lining down the side here, down the one side, at least, of the sleeve, and it continues its merry little way then on the body and down the leg also here as well. He's got himself, again, his pair of sneakers down below there as well, which is a lighter yellow, matching that to, of course, that he has in the movie. And where I may have complained before that the warrior, uh, Bruce Lee, for example, didn't have white, white socks, I think this is fairly accurate, the fact he has darker socks with his sneakers. Yeah, and all in all, it's a better-looking figure, I feel, of Bruce Lee. Is it 100% the likeness of him? I would still say no, but I think it's definitely a lot better than the head sculpt that we got initially. Uh, just to, get, to bring in the original head sculpt, I, think, I even feel like his face is shorter. And like this one here just seems like his face is stretched a little bit further. Maybe even more so giving me that look that it looks to me like Arnold Schwarzenegger. For the figure's articulation, uh, again running through from head down to toe... First of all, Bruce Lee does have, again, that ball joint at the top of the head, so it does allow the head to rotate all the way around. It hinges up, and it hinges down, but still, there are those restrictions just because he's got so much sculpting on the back of his head that you can only bring the head back so far. One thing you probably already know also as well is that the figure's face is a different color than the coloring of his neck. The neck, I think, is probably the original plastic, or they may have painted over top of the yellow. The face doesn't quite match the coloring that they gave to the neck. If you look at it straight forward, it's not so bad. When you look to it from the side, it sort of has more of a yellowish jaundice look to the skin tone that they've given him. So that's a bit of an unfortunate thing. The figure does have, though, hinges in his arms, so you can bring those arms out 90 degrees, actually even further than 90 degrees. Take those arms, yes, in fact, you can rotate them on both the sides. The figure does have a bicep swivel. Figure has only still a single hinge in the elbow, but at least it allows the forearm to rotate back and forth. And still, you can rotate the hand all the way around. Just be careful of the bracelet. Upper torso is on ball joint. The lower torso, lower abdomen area is also on an equally, well, maybe not as hingeable as maybe the top of his body, but it still allows the, the lower abdomen section to rotate back and forth. Legs do split out. Now, the interesting thing about this is because the jumpsuit is more fitted to his body, he doesn't have the bagginess, for example, that the warrior Bruce Lee had. So because of that, like these legs were a little bit more limited. Again, the only real way to give this guy the splits was to bring the legs inward and then you could split them out that way. Because the jumpsuit in this case is actually more conformed to the shape of his body, it's much easier, in fact, to bring the legs outward. As well, you can also bring the legs forward and you bring them back. Still a nice swivel to see on the top of the thigh. Still nice to see that he has a single hinge. I would have really liked if they could have given these guys double hinges on their knees, but still that's enough to get at least some decent articulation poses out of this guy. And of course, when it comes to his ankles, they move back and forth. You can also rock them back and forth this way. And even though neither of these figures come include with display stands, something I would love to see with future Ultimate releases, at the very least, he does have peg holes on the undersides of his feet. They are regular-sized pegs, by the way, so if you did want to give yourself a black display stand, not mentioning the name of the company, we all know who this is from, you can, in fact, use yourself a display stand from another company. So it's the same size diameter peg. All in all, you know, again, like, I will say, like, it hasn't lived up to really what I was hoping this line could very well have been. I mean, that's, again, only basing from the first wave of figures that we've gotten so far. But I will say, though, at least it worked better for me, at least, to have seen and looked at this figure second. I think the Challenger is a far superior looking Bruce Lee. I think it looks a little better of Bruce Lee's likeness than maybe what we got before with the Warrior. The benefit, at least, of them using similar sized bodies and similar equally swappable pegs is that even if you aren't happy necessarily with the original head sculpt, which happened to have been this one right here, you can, though, in fact, swap it out with one of the three, at least, head sculpts that came included with the Challenger Bruce Lee. Even though I feel like my favorite Bruce Lee movie is still Enter the Dragon, it's the one I watch the most, Game of Death, which came out in 1978, so it came out the same year that this guy behind the camera was born. Now you can already start doing the math and realize how old I actually am. There's something about Game of Death that still stands out to me. Well, probably a lot of it obviously had to do with the fact that Bruce Lee was wearing the now so famous yellow jumpsuit. I even referenced it as being a Kill Bill reference. Quentin Tarantino, of course, loved the jumpsuit so much that he had the bride wearing it in Kill Bill. Now, the thing I really also liked about this particular figure is not just the color that the yellow brings now to the table, but the fact that I feel like the likeness is so much better on Bruce Lee than maybe the earlier looked at Warrior. 
it, again, I already mentioned this, that it may have worked better for me to have looked at this figure second, because I feel like based on where this figure landed when it came to rising or keeping setting that bar, I think maybe Warrior may have delivered underneath that. The figure does have still all the same swappable style of hands. He does, have again, have the three different head sculpts. And again, like if you are disappointed maybe by how Warrior turned out, easily you can just use one of the heads that came included with the Challenger version of Bruce Lee and swap it out with that figure instead. For me, though, funny enough, I didn't change the head out at all on this figure release. The way that he came out of the packaging will be the same way, maybe short of changing out the pose that he was uh, original. Obviously, he was just laying down on his back inside the packaging. I'm going to be doing something a little bit more creative, maybe like what I've got going on right now in Final Looks. But yeah, the head sculpt stayed the same, and I can't see myself changing it anytime soon. That, though, may change very well when we get a closer look at, say, the Wave 2 Bruce Lee Ultimate figures, which as of right now aren't out, but if you guys are interested to get your hands on the Wave 1 Ultimate Bruce Lee figures, whether it be this one, the Challenger, or the earlier looked at Warrior, they are available as of right now, where I picked them up at least, at Entertainment Earth. By also using that link that's provided down below in the video description, we'll take you on over to their site and we'll allow you to order the Bruce Lee, but using that same link. Anything that's currently in stock over on their site using that link will take 10% off. So if you want to pick up a few of these figures and maybe you just want a, a little bit more, a little friendlier assistance with your budget, that, like I said, that'll take off 10% to help you a little bit with the savings. Uh, definitely, though, if you guys are interested, get this one for yourself. Uh, it, like I said, it is available. Let me know what you guys, though, think of this wave so far down below. Now, we only really have it based on the two figures we've looked at from Wave 1. Still, Wave 2 is coming our way. But based on at least these reviews, what do you guys think of the line overall? Do you think it pays enough of a tribute of Bruce Lee, or do you feel like it comes up a little bit short? Also, as well, if you guys enjoyed this video, hey now, why not hit it with a like? If you guys are loving the content you guys are seeing and certainly do want to stick around, there may be, by the way, some more Super 7 stuff coming your way. So if that's the kind of thing you like to come back to the yard for, please come back to the yard. And keep, of course, always your peepers peeled. As always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.